Hi, so this is how I use rock wool to start seeds for my indoor hydroponic farm at home. So I have a couple different types of seeds here. Stone seeds from the apricot out back, peas and beans, and then smaller seeds like white strawberry, blackberry, yellow strawberry, and then tomatoes and peppers, which are a little larger. So I use rock wool because I'm able to submerge the cube fully in water and I don't have to worry about overwatering or aeration because it's basically like that pink insulation you might have in your house. It's mineral wool spun from molten rock and slag. So it's not the greatest for the environment, the way it's created and to like put it outside or anything. And it's kind of like fiberglass shards a little bit like insulation. You know how if you get it on you, it's itchy. So I like to wear gloves, a mask, and some sort of eye protection if you're using a lot of it. But if you're usually only like one or two cubes, you don't need that much protection for it. But if you use a lot, like a, a way more protective mask is better just so that you don't inhale any of those particles. So with stone seeds, and you can do this trick with a bunch of other seeds, but you can crack them open and get the little white part on the center and plant that part. It's just a little dangerous with stone seeds. That worked pretty well. So you can plant that little white part in the center and I skip cold stratification by doing this. So rather than waiting a couple months, cold stratifying in the fridge or some other way outside, I just plant it half in a cube and half out. So this way the seed doesn't dry out but it still gets exposed to light. And these are actually two starter leaves that will open up and turn green if you give them the opportunity to. So I like to let those open up still and then leaves will come out of the center of them. That's how I started the seeds for the lemon tree, peach, avocado, and then the apricot I think I got from the backyard because the apricot tree, that's how I got all these seeds. It's from the apricot tree in the backyard. So with beans and peas, they can be a little trickier to start. I like to pre-soak them. So these soaked overnight and you can see how the water is getting a little mucky. That's why I like to pre-soak them overnight to get that like outer layer of skin off of them. And then I'll plant like the bean just like that on top of a rock wool cube. Probably one or two with the beans because they're big. You can get bigger rock wool cubes, but I just like these small ones that fit in my yogurt cups because I used to plant in trays, which you can, but when algae affects the water, if it does, it affects all the cubes. Where this way, if only one cube gets algae or has some sort of issue, all the other cubes are still safe and okay. And if the roots grow, they don't end up interlocking with each other or anything like that. So with small seeds like yellow strawberry, white strawberry, these need cold stratification, the berries. So this bag I'll leave in the fridge, but I'll plant some anyway, which I already have some growing upstairs and I can show, but I'll plant some anyway and then just put these baggies in the fridge, not trying to germinate them, just leaving them dry. And most of the time, like 90% of the time, I'm able to skip cold stratification there as well and the seeds start to work. And if they don't, then I'll just go back to the fridge, grab more and plant more and then put them back in the fridge and just repeat that process. And I usually wait like three or four weeks to see if anything comes up because sometimes they can take a while to come up. Um, but I like to do four to five seeds per cube of smaller seeds. Pretty much whatever will fit in the cube, I'll stuff in there basically. That makes sense. So four or five is pretty good of pepper. We did one yesterday there. One of a stone seed's pretty good because they're pretty large of these cubes. Probably one for the beans and probably four or five of the little seeds. I don't really like to do more than five because seeds usually start to come up and you might have to cull them down. So for example, this is a cauliflower and I wouldn't be able to fit more than one cauliflower in that bucket. So when the seed comes up, if there's three or four of them, when the plants start to get bigger, you kill a couple and leave one so that, unless it's a plant that's like smaller and thinner, maybe like, I don't have a good example right here, but most of the time you really only want one plant in a bucket because they take up so much space. Unless you're using like a different type of setup, um, you usually just want plants spaced out more than that for overcrowding purposes. So <clears throat> 
I use a humidity dome to keep them at 90% humidity, but where I live it's 10 to 20% humidity and they do just fine out here. I have plenty on the ground that are doing just fine over here. I like 3000 Lux for clones and seeds. Um, I use a Lux detector, but basically just that means anywhere in like the off light, but not in the shadow. So kind of like how these are not directly under a light, but off in the shadow. The humidity dome is about 3000 Lux, so that's why I like it. But sometimes with smaller seeds, and even with bigger seeds, just in general, you can get algae on the rock wool. So I like to start seeds outside of the dome in the darkness, off to the side until the seeds germinate a little bit and then put them under the humidity dome so that they can beat algae in the race to germination. And I'll show some examples of how I've lost seeds to algae because I just put them directly under the dome after putting them in the cube. And they're only in the dome for a couple of weeks, but that's enough time for algae to come and kill them. And algae can be nutrients for plants, but it consumes their oxygen and can kill them. So you really don't want algae in your system. It dies in the dark, but um, so you can cover it up and spray it off with a spray bottle. Or, um, like I said, keeping it off to the side, usually the seeds germinate enough to the point where then you can put them in the dome and they'll even get bigger there before algae starts and then you can transfer them. And what's good about rock wool is if the seeds don't work, you can reuse the cube. You can use the cube a bunch of times. Um, it's just not the most environmentally friendly. Like I was saying, it's made from molten rock and slag like insulation is in your house. So there are alternatives like coconut core. I just haven't really experimented with that because I get a lot of small bugs and aphids that I deal with um, without pesticides or insecticides, mainly with a catchy or by hand or a small vacuum. And it just can be really tedious. So I try everything I possibly can to not have bugs. And bugs don't really like rock wool because it's not really like alive or a living thing. And if anything, they'd be after maybe the algae on the rock wool or dead roots, but I don't really get dead roots with rock wool because there's perfect aeration and uh, oxygen for the roots. So I get a lot of questions about how do um, plants not drown in water? And that's because plants' roots need oxygen. There's oxygen in water, usually not enough for big plants. So that's why I pump air into the bottom of the buckets so that they are assured to always have oxygen and moisture going throughout the system and a high humidity splashing around. If you do not use air pumps, that's the cracky method, where you rely on the water to go lower in your system for the roots to come in contact with air in a high humidity environment that's enclosed so that there's still enough oxygen for the plant to survive because the plant will drown if there's not enough oxygen. So usually in these small cubes and systems, there's plenty of oxygen for a small seed and you can fully submerge and there's no chance of getting root rot because of the oxygen in the cube and in the water, which is something you can't really do with soil. You're not going to fully submerge a soil cube. And that's what makes rock wool really low maintenance is it's pretty set it and forget it. I plant these seeds, leave them off to the side in a couple days, check back if they germinate put them under the dome, in a couple weeks again, check back if they've grown a little bit and they got some roots poking out or a couple leaves, they're ready for transfer at that point. So I just wanted to do a cube together with you guys. We're going to do tomato black cherry. So like, we're going to do four to five per cube. Let's get a new one. So I'll actually drop the seeds on the cube. I surface plant to one millimeter down so that they don't dry out, but the light can still come in contact with them. I like to put one in each corner like dice and one in the center. So you can kind of see those five seeds. Like I said, I like them kind of exposed to the light, but not out of the cube enough to the point where they'll dry out. And then you can submerge it pretty much all the way, just like that's perfect. And then set it and forget it. They usually don't dry out. If you leave them out in the open, they dry out faster. If you put them under the dome, they dry out slower. So this looks pretty full, but after a couple days, this will empty and you'll have to fill it back up. If you leave it under the dome though, I notice these stay full for like weeks. And I just put these little labels on each cup so that I don't forget what they are. I just want to show some examples upstairs of my dome and what I got going on. 
So I don't use tap water. I re use reverse osmosis filtered water from my AquaTrue under the sink. And I fill it up in the five gallon jugs with this hose for all my plants around the house. I haven't experimented with using the tap water because it's heavily chlorinated here. And you just might get different results if you're using tap water. That's just something you might want to be aware of. This is about a pH of 6 to 6.5. And yeah. So I also have their tabletop one that I'll use sometimes to help fill up jugs. The seeds like just fresh water for the first couple of weeks. When they transfer them to the bucket, that's when I give them their first bit of nutrient water. So I haven't transferred these pineapples. I've been sitting on these for a month or two and just kind of cracking them in this little yogurt cup because I wanted to make a video of how to clone pineapple and maybe put some outside. So I haven't just been giving this one fresh water. After the roots got a couple inches long, I started to get squirt a little nutrient water in there for them. Just, again, to keep it low maintenance, but give them a little bit of nutrients just so I don't got to think about it. And so they got a little bit more than fresh water in there. And then I keep this in my fridge. You don't want it to come in contact with any of your food or anything, like drip on anything, so you got to wipe it off or have a cap. But um, the nutrient water stores really well in a cold, dark place, so it stays really, really fresh in the fridge. So if you got a good spot for it in a small bottle, it just stays really fresh in there. Again, you don't obviously want it coming in contact with any food items. So then I have the yellow strawberry, white strawberry, blueberry, and blackberry seeds. So like I said, I planted these straight into a cube right away, and some of them worked. But I put these in the fridge, and the ones that don't work, I come back, grab the seeds from the fridge, and then retry again. I'm not trying to germinate them in this bag or anything. There's no moisture. This is just the dry bag I store them in. So that's how I cold stratify, and I skip cold stratify a lot. Generally, seeds germinate best between 68 and 86, but I remember that as 65 and 85. So you can use a heat mat, but usually the dome gets hot enough because of the light. Even holding this light is really hot. And um, you can have a little temperature thing in there with the humidity. So I give them 12-12 under the humidity dome. Like I was saying, here we have those seeds. I start off to the side, and then when they start to germinate and get a little bigger, I'll put them under the dome so that they're beating the algae in the race. This one in the back, and I'll show other clips. Lost to the algae. So if I had started it outside, and now I can't really reuse this cube the greatest. I can, but it's going to be a pain. If I had started it out to the side, I could have avoided that algae, put it in the dome, and then it would have been working great. So I just want to show you guys. This one's coming up. So I would put this one in the dome. This is rosemary before the stem starts to reach for light right there so i would put that in the dome right now it's already germinated enough to the point where it'll get big like this rosemary right here and be algae in the race and this rosemary is ready for transfer so some seeds and plants are really thin and without wind indoors we lose that stimulation of uh, thicker growth because of it so something like this scallion or chickpea you may want to have wind simulated on it for a couple minutes a day. Not enough to create like wind burn or to damage the plant, just a couple minutes of some light wind to stimulate that back and forth um, growth. Because most of my plants I string up so that they don't crack or break or fall over because we don't have that wind stimulation to make them stronger. Let me go show you guys our 8x8 tent right over here. So when I transfer them, they're no longer in 12-12. Plants are either short day, long day, or day neutral. That's their light schedule. Day neutral will flower under any light schedule. Long day will flower beyond 12 hours, and short day will flower lower than 12 hours. So some plants you may not want to flower, and like lettuce. So lettuce is a long day plant and will flower under long days, but it will never flower under a shorter day. Some berries, a lot of berries, are short day. So they'll flower under short day, but they won't flower under long day, certain cultivars. So I do a short cold day tent to make the plants think it's a certain time of year so that the short cold day plants will flower and the long day plants like lettuce won't flower. So we have white strawberry we did last time, blackberry, arugula, gourmet lettuce, basil, Red acre cabbage, oh sorry, Brussels sprouts, 
red acre cabbage, gourmet lettuce again, and then three raspberries we just did. So you can see their cube is still in there, very small. We try to cover it up because they're in a race against that algae, which can be tough with these small seeds. So I usually do two types of tent, short cold day or long day and kind of warmish. With short cold day that I do eight hours and I like to keep between 60 and 70 degrees. A lot of plants go dormant below 41. It's hard to even get that cold if I tried to. I have low humidity in here, about 20 to 30%, and low humidity can make temperatures feel colder than they are. So I don't like to go below 50, but that's really hard as well. So anywhere between, anywhere between 60 and 70 is maintainable for me. I don't like to go above 70 because the strawberries in the other room stop flowering above 79. So the colder the better usually for the berries and to just signal to them that it's a certain time of year since I want to tell them it's a certain time of year. So that's just some companion planting I like to think about. The lettuces and the berries will do good under a short cold day together. But some plants need long days to flower. Like I grew wheat, which I wouldn't do twice, but it needed long days to flower. So I could put something like peppers and tomatoes, which are day neutral and don't care what light schedule they get next to that. Just because if I'm going to be giving a longer day to a plant, why not put a day neutral with it? just to give it even more light. But I could even put a day neutral in here. So the reason I like short cold day tents is because you can manipulate long day plants, flower short day plants, and then keep day neutral there as well. We put out a vlog of us building this tent from start to finish and some updates on it if you're interested. I have a link to all my hydroponic gear I use down below. I feel it for it on Amazon, so any purchases help out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. We also affiliate for Mars Hydro and I have discount codes for grow lights, grow tents, and grow tent kits. So links to all that will be down below. And if you're interested, I have my hydroponic plants playlist and what YouTube thinks is best for you. Or you could subscribe and follow for more plant videos. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and have a great day.